Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. So in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to do another post-processing tutorial based on data given from given to us from the C star S50 data. Now, this data was obtained by our friend TJ Canali. I apologize if that is not how you actually pronounce your name. Uh, but one thing I want everybody to remember when it comes to the C star S50 is that it is still under beta pro uh, testing. Um, and it's the images that we have obtained is done with very limited exposures. So please do not use this completely as, oh, how good is the device? Because anything I get right now, it's going to be better. So if, you, if you're not happy with how good it is, just always remember this device is still under beta testing. It is going to continue to get better in the future until the release of the final product, which has been scheduled for August. So uh, I did another video on this before. However, the upload quality was not the best. And I kind of sped through it just to show the finalized image that was given to us from the CSR S50. But in this video, we're going to work on two deep sky objects that I did on the previous video, but we're going to be taking it more step by step on how to process it. So let's go ahead and get started with that now. First thing we want to do is we want to open up Cyril. And we want to check a few things first. So go to your preferences. And we want to make sure our bare mosaic pattern is set as GRBG because GRBG is the mosaic pattern that the CSR S50 uses when it comes to shooting the FITS files. Uh, however, if you're not, if you don't really want to do that, maybe you're feeling a little bit lazy, you can just have this checked and have your bare information for files header for available. Uh, you can leave this whatever it is and it should automatically convert to GRBG. Uh, all of the files that you have so that's a nice thing that we can kind of use to speed the process up a little bit so go ahead and hit cancel and another thing you want to make sure for this is you want to make sure you have osc pre-processing without dbfs installed in your script if you do not have it installed make sure you go and check out my video that i have on my channel on how to set up serial it has a link on how to go get those scripts and it also shows you how to install it on here now Another thing that I want to show is on image processing, we are going to be testing the C, uh, the Starnet star, remo star removal, as I have not actually checked to see if star removal works on the C star S50 images. Uh, so we're going to test that out as well. Again, if you do not have that installed, I have a tutorial on how to install that on my channel. Uh, so yeah, let's just go ahead and get into it. We're going to set our home directory as the Whirlpool Galaxy, just like this. Click on it, hit open. And it should show up here as the Whirlpool Galaxy once you're done. And we're going to run the script. And we're actually going to go to Registration first and hit Simplify Drizzle just to bring out a little bit more detail on this. So let's go back to our console. And we're going to hit Script. And we're going to uh, go ahead and run the script now. And we'll come back to the video once this, the script is done running. Okay, as you can see, rejection stacking is complete. That only took 12 seconds, which is very quick. Of course, it's not very many exposures. Keep that in mind. The more exposures you get, the better quality image you get. And this did not have very many image, uh, many exposures, so you can't expect this to be the top tier that you could get if you had more. So we're going to go ahead and open up our result.fit file. Go ahead, hit open up here, and click on result.fit. You're going to hit open. Now, as you can see, it's kind of like cell phone format size, but honestly, that's because of the field of view of the C-Star it has a much smaller field of view, which is honestly, I prefer that because it allows you to see more details of the deep sky objects that you're photographing. So we're going to go ahead and go to our linear and we're going to click auto stretch. As you can see, it's completely green. So we're going to unlink that. We're going to go to image processing and we're going to do our background extraction. Now, the fastest way you can do with background extraction is to hit, just hit generate and it should automatically sample the image as many times as is necessary and you can just hit compute background but if you're not happy with that and you want to do it manually just go ahead and hit clear and you can just select parts of the image that uh don't have stars or galaxy or nebula or whatever you have in your image in it so i don't really want to do that i'm just going to go ahead and do it automatically kind of turn up the grid tolerance a little bit and hit generate and we're going to hit compute background i'm going to hit apply and i'm going to go to my green move green noise hit apply and before we do the Starnet, we're going to go to Image Processing. We're going to do our 
color calibration, and we are going to do a photometric color calibration. And we're going to type in M51, hit find. We're going to try to get the metadata from the image. As you can see, the resolution is 2.374, which is great. And we're going to hit OK. OK, photometric color calibration is complete. We're going to hit close, and we're going to save this now because I'm not sure if starting is actually going to work, and I don't want it to mess up our result file. So let's go to image processing. We're going to go to star processing, star net star removal, and we're going to hit pre-stretch linear image. Now, the reason for this is because if you pay attention, you go to linear mode here, and the image is completely black. And as a result of it being black, the computer is not going to know what is galaxy and what is stars, what it actually has to remove. So we may have to make sure we have that checked. And we're going to upsample it, and we're just going to hit execute, and we're going to come back to when the star net star removal is complete. Okay, Starnet star removal is complete, as you can see up here. It should automatically open the starlessresult.fit file, but if it did not, you could just go ahead and hit open and click on starlessresult.fit. Oh, wow, you can actually see the galaxy right there. That's nice. And we're going to hit open. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go to image processing and go to generalized hyperbolic stretch transformations. We're going to bump this up to 100, and we're going to click on a symmetry point here. And we're just going to start bringing up the stretch factor to try to get the galaxy back into the image. As you can see, the galaxy is right here, but it's very, very bright. We don't really like how bright it is. We're gonna reset that. And another thing you can do is you can just select it here and press this button, and it should automatically set the symmetry point. You can kind of drag it around again. There's our galaxy right there. Just bring it up a tiny bit more, but not too much. Hit apply. We're gonna hit close. We're going to go to image processing, histogram transformation, and we're going to hit one here just to bump it back to the, the normal level. And we're just going to drag the black over just to get the darker part of the image back where we want it to be. We're going to hit apply, and we're going to hit close. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go to image processing again. Again, histogram transformation, try to get a little bit more black in here just to make the uh, background nice and dark. Hit apply, hit close. And we are now going to do a color calibration. So go ahead and go here and hit color calibration. You're going to select this area here and you're going to use current selection, background neutralization, and we're going to select the galaxy, just like that, where it has most of the color of it. Use current selection and hit apply. As you can see, it kind of changed the coloration just a tiny bit. We're going to hit close and we're going to go to image processing, color saturation, and we're going to drag this up to get the coloration back in our image. We're going to make sure the background factor is all the way up so that we don't affect the background. Hit apply. We're going to do that again. Now, that added just a bit too much. We don't want those darker pixels in there. You're just going to lower it down just a tiny bit. Background factor back up. Hit apply. And here's our starless result. As you can see, the, uh, the galaxy is looking quite nice already. We're going to save that. We're going to go to image processing and we're going to bring the stars back in here. So go to star processing, star recomposition, and we're going to go to our background stretch parameters and add in our star result. Hit open. There it is. Star stretch parameters, star mask result, and hit open. Now I added some of the stars back in. You kind of just drag this around just to get as many stars back in here as you want. Once you're happy with it, you can also add the black point back in here. I hit apply, I hit apply, I hit close, and here is our finalized image. This was the image, again, taken with the C-Star S50, uh, and we're going to go ahead and set our home directory just to our pictures so we can save that in here. Let's just go to pictures here, open, and we're going to save this as a unique file to pictures. Now, we're going to go to our home and we're going to start processing the ring nebula now. So let's go ahead and go back to serial, C star is 50, ring nebula. And we're going to basically go through the same process as we just did. So uh, we set that as the home directory. As you can see, it's right here. And we're going to run through our script, OSCP processing without DBF once again. And we'll come back to once the script is done uh, running. Okay, stacking is now complete. That only took 39.16 seconds. And so we're just going to go ahead and open that up. So ring nebula result.fit, and we're going to hit open. As you can see, you actually already see the ring nebula right there. We're going to do our auto stretch. And we're basically going to run through the, oh wow, you can already see the color right there. That's pretty cool. 
Uh, we're going to go through and we're going to do the same process as last time. So background extraction, hit generate. As you can see, it kind of landed on a nebula. So we're going to move this down, generate again, and it kind of got rid of it. So hit compute background, just to even it all out. So you can see it looks much more even now. We're going to reduce the green noise. Where's that at? Right there. Hit apply. Hit close. And we're going to go to image processing again. Color calibration. Photometric color calibration. I believe this is M57. So we're going to set it as that. Hit find. As you can see, there we have it right there. I set the coordinates and everything. We're going to hit OK. And it is complete. Now, I'm not sure if Starnet is going to work on that. Because usually whenever I do Starnet on this kind of thing, uh, I have some issues with it. It tries to remove the ring nebula from the image because it thinks it's a star. So we're going to go ahead and try it here. Go to image processing. Again, make sure you have it saved first before you do this. Uh, image processing, star processing, and Starnet star removal. And again, pre-stretch and up sample, hit execute. Okay, you can see it's ready. It did, in fact, remove the ring nebula from our image. So as you can see, I guess Starnet star removal is not really the way to go when it comes to the ring nebula. So we're going to go back to our result.fit. And we're just going to process it with all the stars still in it. So let's make sure we go to linear mode. We're going to go to image processing and go to generalized hyperbolic tra stretch transformation and bump this back up to 100. We're going to set our symmetry point as always and bump it up. Make sure you don't bump it up too high, but enough where you can get the correct nebulosity. We're going to hit apply. And we're going to go to our histogram transformation, just like we always do. Set this back to 1. And this, I, I want to just give credit. I'm not exactly, I can't remember who it was, but someone did inform me about this button. I didn't even realize this button was here. He said it was easier. Uh, thank you to whoever that was. They actually left a comment in a previous video. Uh, so, yeah, thank you for that. I didn't know about that. So we're going to drag this over and get our black point back. Nice and dark. Hit apply and just drag it over just a little bit more. Nice and dark in the background. Hit apply. We're going to close and we're going to zoom in on this ring nebula here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go to image processing and do our color calibration again. Select our background here. Make sure there's no stars in it. Use the current selection and hit the background neutralization. Now select the nebula where it has the most coloration. Use current selection and hit apply. Very nice. We're going to hit close. Now let's kind of select this area. I'm not really sure if this make, makes a difference, but sometimes I feel like it does, just having it selected. We're going to go to our color saturation here. We're going to drag it up. Let's see we get the coloration. No, I guess the selecting it didn't really do anything. We kind of try to uh, bump up the background factor again. Hit apply. We want to make sure we don't get any hot pixels in here due to increased saturation. And go ahead and bump that up, but not too much. We want it to look natural still, remember. And hit apply. We're going to go ahead and zoom back out. And there is our ring nebula. So again, we're going to go ahead and we're going to hit home. After we go ahead and save it, we don't want anything to happen to it. Hit home. We're going to go to pictures and just save it in our home directory. And save it as a unique file. And let's go check out our images. Go to pictures here. I can't quite recall which one it is. So we're going to check here. All right. So here is our ring nebula. As you can see, it looks quite nice. You get a lot of detail. It's nice that you can see the coloration of the rings. You can you also see barely, barely a uh, white dot in the middle, which is actually a star that's right in the middle of the ring nebula right there. Uh, it's more visible if you zoom out. But you can see the nice red coloration with the blue inside. You can't really see that with smaller aperture telescopes. So that, that's quite nice. I, I'm happy to see that. Uh, so we're going to have to save that, and I'll show that in the, like, full uh, at the end of the video. Uh, let's go to our Whirlpool Galaxy now. Now, this isn't as bright, of course, when we get more exposures, because once once the device is actually released, we can get more exposures, and we can kind of play around with it ourselves. But I think that the fact that you can see this much detail on the galaxy, all the banding and the 
the gas inside of the galaxy i think it's quite nice i'm quite impressed with it again the images are going to continue to get better as the beta is completed and the finalized product is released again it should be released in august according to the zwo website uh but stay tuned stay tuned uh hopefully we'll be able to get a few more samples in the future uh before the finalized product is released hopefully we can get more uh, exposures of deep sky objects and process it just to show you guys a little bit more of what this device is capable of but again i i hope this at least was informative for all of you if you didn't enjoy it hopefully you did enjoy it I, that's what i'm trying to do for all of my videos make them enjoyable uh but if you didn't enjoy it hopefully at least it was informative hopefully it helped you out a little bit so Again, thank you guys very much for watching. Please stay tuned for future videos and leave a like and subscribe. And as always, I wish you clear skies.